it's been quite the conversation amongst Montreal Canadiens fans the past few weeks. Everybody is talking about this on Twitter. It's always popping up in my comment section as well whenever Canadiens fans talk about who they want to take with their pick in this year's draft. And I say their pick because we're not referring to the Florida Panthers pick. It kind of are able to assume that, right? If we go over on a tankathon right now, we can see the Canadians have themselves the fifth overall pick and the fifth best odds at getting first overall. Safe to say, they may not be getting it this time around. So, if we assume the Habs stick around at number five, who exactly is there that the Canadians could set their grubby little paws on? Well, there have been a few names that have popped up in that conversation, but the one that I'm seeing Canadians fans wanting the most is the topic of today's video. And in fact, we had ourselves a TSN audio hit that goes out there and says that maybe this isn't even a thing, or not TSN, excuse me, RDS. Yeah, completely different company over there. But either way, we're talking today about the Russian phenom in this year's draft, Matt Vey Mishkov. We've made a ton of videos about this guy, spanning back to when he was like 15, 16 years old, way before 2023 draft coverage on the channel was the norm. But Mishkov, if you just need the little bit of a scouting report update, when he was playing for the Youth Olympic Games a few years ago, he was labeled by the Olympics as the best Russian goal-scoring prospect since Alex Ovechkin. And that's all you kind of really need to know. He's a top goal scorer, he's a really talented player, however, the problem with Mishkov is that he's got a contract that sticks him to the side of SKA St. Petersburg until 2026. Aside from that, this is a player with a lot of talent and a lot of potential as a superstar, game-breaking player, throw out all the big names and the superlatives however you see fit because Matvey Mishkov is one of the most talented prospects we have seen in a long time. If there was no concern about the Russian factor, the safety of these Russian players, the circumstances in which they're getting drafted from, or the contract which ties Mishkov in Russia for the next few years, there probably would have been a lot more, let's just say, solidarity amongst the masses as to where Mishkov should be drafted. Long story short, he's a good player. There's just some extra stuff that's keeping him off the board from being a consolidated number two. He's ranked four, third overall by most outlets. Some have him at number two above Adam Vantilli, so we'll see where things go on draft day. But the common idea that has been thrown around there the past few weeks was that a lot of these factors of Russian status in the world, the geology of what's going on, the circumstances around Mishkov and his hockey playing situation, there's been a lot of talk the past little while that these things are so impactful that Matt Vimishkov, a player whom a lot of people would say is the second or third best player in this draft, might not even get drafted until somewhere in the sixth or the seventh or the eighth overall spot at the very worst. There are reasons why teams may pass on this guy. And because that idea has grown so tremendously the past little while, Canadians fans everywhere are saying, hey, this should be our dude. Like, if we got that fifth overall pick and we assume Bedard, Fantilli, Carlson are off the board, the Habs are going to get one of Will Smith or Matt Faye Mishkov. And if Mishkov is the guy, then hey, so be it. That should be our player. If you have Mishkov and Caulfield as your 1-2 scoring threat on the wings in the next few seasons, that could be a bona fide game changer. Imagine two 40-goal caliber guys who could potentially be at the spotlight of 50 goals at some points in their careers. This could be a great move, and because of that, we've seen a lot of people on my comments section on Twitter just saying, hey, future Hab, future Hab, future Hab, even if you go to Matt Vimishkov's Instagram and you see the most recent post he made a few days ago, all the top comments say, hey, you're a future Hab, come to Montreal. But... There was this radio hit done on RDS. Stéphane LaRue, who spoke with some of the Montreal Canadiens scouts, does not think the Habs would like to draft Mishkov, even at fifth overall. Attached is a video hit, excuse me, it's not a radio hit, it's a video segment from RDS television, where they essentially say it in French that, hey, based off the conversations that I've been having with Montreal scouts, I'm skeptical that they would be interested in drafting Mishkov. And as you could imagine, the reactions to this clip, they were posted on the Reddit and everything, the reactions are quite mixed. A lot of Canadians fans are saying, okay, well, why should we believe that? That's a smokescreen. 
Like, of course, the Canadians are going to go out there and tell the media. They're going to tell somebody who reports to the media something that isn't true. Because if this leaks that they actually do want to take Mishkov, then it kind of foils the rest of their plans and it would give a lot of other teams leverage when it comes to negotiating potential trades with the Canadians. So why would the Canadians be open and honest about this stuff when a guy who works for RDS is going to go out there and talk to them about it? Of course, they're not going to be truthful. And then you have yourselves a lot of other Canadians fans saying, oh no, why are we going to do this? The Canadians should not do this. They already have experience taking guys that are going against the grain. Cole Caulfield, remember him? Four years ago in 2019, he slipped and slipped and slipped because of his height. For Mishkov, he might slip and slip and slip because of his nationality. He might have a similar sort of downfall in the draft that allows the Canadians to pick him up at a spot that he should not have any business being available at. This is a first, maybe second, overall potential caliber guy that has been touted as Connor Bedard's rival, neck in neck, ever since like 2020. It's been a while. So why is all that gone now? Because the guy is in Russia. There's no sensical reason to believe that should be the case. So for the Canadians, why would they go out there and pass on it? If this word is true that they actually are considering taking somebody else, should Mishkov even be available to them, then that's blasphemy. And a lot of Canadians fans are freaking out about that. So both sides have been pretty well represented when it comes to the fan reception I'm seeing here. But at the end of the day, when it comes to Mishkov as a player, he's good. And he's going to be good. We all know that. It's just, you have to try and weigh the pros and the cons. If you're drafting, let's say, hypothetically, second overall. The Canadians win second. They're not drafting fifth. Whatever. They have the choice. Connor Bedard is off the board. Do you want to go out there and wait an extra three years that are not guaranteed because if things in Russia go crazier, then who knows how long that guy's going to be forced to stay around with SKA St. Petersburg? Or would you rather take a guy like Adam Fantilli, who was the best freshman in the NCAA since Eichel in Korea, sign that guy right away, bring him into the NHL, and all of a sudden, boom, the next three, four, five, hopefully 10 years of his career is under your control, you call the shots, you do all the development, you put him through the ringer. For Matt Vey Mishkov, there's an insecurity because you don't have that. You don't have that for the first three years that he's going to be under your organization because he's already signed with SKA. And because Russia is Russia right now, it's impossible to say, okay, three years and then he's done, he's in the NHL. It could be four years. It could be five years, depending on how things go in the next few. But there are also the concerns that I've been oddly enough seeing everybody talk about as to whether or not he would want to come over to. I mean... I don't know. Try to convince the guy with money. Say, hey, like, we'll sign you to a contract. We'll sign you to an ELC. You'll get a few hundred thousand dollars from that. And then once you get that big money contract, you're going to be what? If he's 21 years old, signs another two year, three year ELC, he's going to be 24, 25 years old. And he'll potentially be able to make millions and millions of dollars if he is as good as everybody thinks he's going to be. Like, Mishkov, realistically, if he stays in the KHL for the next three seasons and then he comes over to the NHL, you're thinking about a player that is as good or maybe even better than Kaprizov was when Kaprizov made his debut. That guy got 100 points last year. Mishkov, based off of everything we've been hyping him to be ever since he made his debut at the Youth Olympic Games all those years ago, could be that and even more. We're talking maybe a ceiling of 55 to 60 goals, and you never say that about anybody who is only 17. 18 years old. You never say that. That's why for Mishkov, this is a prospect that is so above and beyond crazy good that if you're talking about just talent and potential, he's up there. He's second overall. Easy. But there are too many other things in this draft that are a lot more guaranteed and don't have the same concerns. So for Matvey Mishkov and the Canadians, it's all just a matter of what you want to Place your focus on, I guess, what do you think is more important to think about. If you're a Canadians fan, then let me know in the comments all your ideas and opinions about this sentiment that was thrown out there on RDS, that the Canadians apparently would not want to get Mishkov, even at number five. Let's say he drops to five. It goes Bedard, Fantilli, Carlson, and then Will Smith. Mishkov is there, and they take somebody else. What are your thoughts on if that happens? Let me know in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishraj Rolls 99. And... Bye.